I was just losing my <laughs> with Facebook. <laughs> Can you see how red my chest has gone? That's that's anger. That's venom. <laughs> It was driving me wild trying to get live. I wanted to be landscape. It wasn't working. I'm here anyway. I'm here. Albeit a little late. Sorry, peeps. Soul Centre Millionaire TV as normal. Um, sharing a really hot topic with you today. Overwhelm. Hey, Kerry. How are you doing? Who else is there? When you're getting logged in, say hello. If you're up on live, then tell me you're in live so I can... Um, I can see who's joining me live and but also if you're watching on replay tell me you're watching on replay by dropping a replay in the comments because it's really interesting to see who's catching me replay and where are you logging in from i really want to know that this evening i want to know who's logging in from what part of the world um kerry couldn't find me was having a monday night meltdown it's my fault it's because i'm late it's because i'm late hot topic is overwhelm because so many people exist in a state of overwhelm and it's really hard to get anything done when you're in it. So we're going to bust it wide open really, really fast with something that's really easy to implement, simple. Anybody can do it. Even if your overwhelm seems massive, you can still do it. So this is for women in business, female entrepreneurs that are feeling like the to-do list keeps getting bigger and you don't know where to start. Feeling like the workload, the gravity of your workload is deflating you and making you feel less than inspired. Feeling like you're, you're feeling kind of pulled from pillar to post and, and foggy because there's so much for you to achieve. This is for you if you're feeling any of those things. I hear you. I've been there quite recently, actually. I think we can be in and out of overwhelm um, throughout our careers and, and life in business, but it's really important to be able to recognize it quickly and change it super fast. I'm gonna help you with that tonight. While you guys are getting logged in and telling me if you're live by, by co commenting in the chat box and saying live, or telling me if you're on replay, of course, if you're watching on Catch Up, but also telling me where are you logging in from? I really wanna know this today. Jack is in Lanzarote, one of my favorite places. While you're doing that, I'm gonna tell you about this. My book recommend for today. This is going to be um, the wrong way around, isn't it? I've just realised. It's called If I Could Tell You Just One Thing. This is a must read. It's so inspiring. They're really short chapters, so you can pick it up, put it down. It's easy reading, and it's really influential people. One second. Babe, can you get the dog out of the room and shut the door? Because she's just pushed her way in, and she's going to sit by my legs, snoring, because that's what she does best. She's like, <laughs> she's like a little pig. So she's pushed away, <laughs> pushed away into my office, pushed the door open, and she starts snorting like a pig. And I can't have you subjected to that. So she's gone now. This book's amazing. So really incredible people, like famous people, uh, people that have achieved things, really, you know, extraordinary things. They've all got a chapter each. And the author has asked them, you know, if you could tell us just one thing, one piece of advice, Corfu, amazing, one piece of advice, what would it be? And the chapter is dedicated to their piece of advice. And you've got all sorts of incredible people's advice in the, between these pages. And it's amazing, people from different backgrounds, different level of achievements, and the amount of wisdom that you can get from this book is incredible. And that leads me to a question that I want to ask you because we're all here because we're women who support other women in business. We're here because we're striving for extraordinary success and you're here to learn and we learn more by being around awesome women. So I'm going to ask you something because I know each one of you is an awesome woman. I'm going to ask you to give back this evening. I'm here for you to consume value and knowledge and I love showing up for you to do that but I'm going to ask you to give back tonight I'm just going to ask you one thing all I want you to do is just one thing I want you to type in the chat box as an extraordinary woman it doesn't matter what level of achievement you're at in business or how much money you earn the fact that you're here learning striving pushing to create a business and a life that impacts other people in a positive way makes you an extraordinary woman. You're not settling. You're not sitting there moaning about your circumstances but doing nothing about them. You're stepping up. You're rising up to, you know, stepping up to the plate and making a difference. So you're an extraordinary woman. I want you to give your one piece of advice. 
if you could tell our audience, these other women on this on this live tonight and anybody that's going to log in on replay, one thing, just one thing, you know, if someone asked you just one piece of wisdom that you think would make the different, make a difference to other women, what would it be? I want you to comment that in the chat box. You don't have to do it immediately, but just commit to doing it and giving back in some way today because your one comment could be exactly what somebody needs to hear tonight. And it could have a profound effect on them. Equally, you reading everybody else's comments, you could stumble across the one thing that you really needed to hear tonight that could have a profound effect on you. And as cheesy as it sounds, together we really do achieve more. So that's that's my task for you this evening. I hope all of you all rise to it. So who else have we got here tonight and where are you logging in from? Come on, talk to me. You're a quiet bunch tonight. I can see you all. Are you all busy, multitasking? Is that what it is? I want your attention now because we're going to jump into the training overwhelm how to do it how to do it how to do it not how to do overwhelm but how to beat it how to get rid of it i'm seeing some of your wisdom pop up already jackie says believe in yourself so simple but so um so important if you don't believe in you no one else is going to believe in you you're not going to have the ability to influence other people if if you don't believe in you don't listen to yourself limiting beliefs never give in always believe in yourself no one to accept help. Brilliant. Rejection is the universe protection. Ooh, I'm loving some of these. I'm going to stop reading them now. I'm going to have to read them at the end. Okay, so how to reduce overwhelm in an instant. That's the topic of conversation tonight. This has come at a time where I have just come out of a period of overwhelm. You know I'm a straight shooter, I'll be really honest with you. I never show up pretending to be the finished article. No matter how much money you earn, how much success you have, how many lives you impact or how big your business is, you're never done. You're never the finished article. You still mess up. You still make mistakes. And I'm no different to that. And in February, I was overwhelmed for the most part. In fact, if I'm really honest, I've spent most of this year feeling overwhelmed. So I'm going to touch on some of the reasons why, while I'm sharing with you how I snapped out of it once I recognised it. And I can honestly say with my hand on my heart that it's the first time in probably three years that I felt like that because I have got a really good handle on balance. I pride myself as being someone that shows women how to have millionaire style success but without having to work like a dog to achieve it, without having to make massive sacrifices so that you're not seeing your family or you're having no time for yourself. Because for me, success isn't success at all if you don't have time to make memories. So I pride myself on this stuff, but every now and then I'm human and I fuck up. And notice how I'm miming when I'm swearing. Because those of you all know I've got a potty mouth and I tell it like it is. Apparently Facebook aren't keen on that always in some live videos and I was on a bit of a live video ban <laughs> because of it so profanity has to be kept at its minimum apparently boring anyway so the first thing I want to share with you my first tip on reducing our work there's only two this is a two-part it's dead simple and anybody can do it and it will shift it immediately for you the first thing is about over committing we're high achievers. Everybody on this call is a high achiever. If you're a natural high achiever, then you run the risk of overcommitting all the time because you'll overstretch yourself. You'll be the sort of person that says, yes, I can do that. And I can do it in this short time frame because come on, I'm going to kill it. And you'll, you know, overcommit, overachieve, be overzealous in your, in your ability to do everything in a really short space of time. I see you. I know that's what you probably do <laughs> because... That's what makes you great in many respects. You don't shy away from something because it feels hard. You, you say, yes, I can do it, and you get it done. But it can bite you in the backside as well. And you can end up being overzealous to the detriment of yourself and how you feel. And the bottom line is, if you don't feel good, then you achieve less. Fact. If you feel great everything's easier. You're more inspired, you get more done. You feel more motivated, you achieve more in a shorter space of time. When you're working, your results are better because your energy influences. So you can influence people, situations, 
to move in your favor. It's like the universe is just moving every obstacle out of your way when we feel amazing. If we're overwhelmed, we're not high vibration. If we're overwhelmed, we're feeling some of the low vibration feelings and they're not fun at all. So we've got to ditch overwhelm really quickly. Now, one of the things that causes it is this overcommitment, this this um, almost like urge that we have to resist constantly as, as our high achievers too, overcommit. This was me this year, I overcommitted massively and to the detriment of the way I felt. So this is how I want you to think about this and how you can kick it. So think about your internet, right? The bandwidth in, on your internet. You know, it's got a capacity, hasn't it? And when you reach that capacity, everything starts to slow down. If you're running too many programs at one time, if you're going live in one room, downloading a video in another and someone's watching Netflix in another and then somebody else is doing something else in another room, then the internet's gonna reach its capacity, it's gonna reach its bandwidth. And when the bandwidth is reached, everything starts slowing down, right? Everything is harder. It's like the computer or the internet's having to work harder to achieve the same amount. And it's taking ages and it gets frustrating, right? The thing that you could do in 10 seconds yesterday suddenly is taking like half an hour and it's not even 50% complete. We are exactly the same. We have a bandwidth. We have a capacity. When we reach our capacity, things start slowing down. Everything feels harder. It feels like you're swimming upstream. The things that you were doing effortlessly last week, you're no longer doing effortlessly. Even the things that you're doing exactly the same, they're not bringing you the same result all of a sudden. Everything feels really hard. And you've just reached a capacity. You've reached your bandwidth. And what do we do when we've got a computer with loads of windows open and we're at capacity and everything starts slowing down? What do we need to do? What's the number one thing we need to do? We need to close some windows. Walking through treacle, Amanda. Yes, it feels exactly like walking through treacle. We've got to close some windows when we feel like that. You can't achieve everything that you want to achieve walking through treacle. You've got to be smarter with the thing with the things that you want to achieve in, in a short amount of time. So the first thing we've got to do is, is close some windows. We've got to look at the, where our time's going and say, what is absolutely necessary right now? Hey, Jesse, what, what is it that I absolutely need to focus on right now? What are the things that are going to lead me to my goals quickest? Because the thing is, when you get overwhelmed, normally it's because you've lost sight. You've lost sight of what's important. You've lost sight of the one thing that you're working towards, the one goal. When I lost sight of this at the beginning of the year, here's what happened. I started the year overzealous because I started the year rested. Never underestimate the power of rest. <laughs> I had come off a, a lovely Christmas break. We'd been on a cruise. We'd flight made it our phone and had zero access to the internet and even the outside world for the most part. Hey, Joe, how are you doing? And... In doing that, I came back in January like, rah, let's go. Who else feels like that? Give me some hearts if you can relate. When you take time out, even if you're somebody that struggles to take time out and you have to force yourself, but you know it's good for you. A bit like when your mum's forcing medicine in your mouth when you were little and you're like, rah, even though you know it's going to make you better, you just don't want to take it. We resist the things we need the most. Most people resist taking time out, especially high achievers. But when you do it, you come back. So you can see your hearts and know you know what I'm talking about. You come back feeling great. I came back in January feeling like I could take on the freaking world. And I set all these really big goals for the first quarter. Now, love a cruise, me too, Kate. Check out a company called Scenic. That's who I cruise with. They do the most incredible trips. If you love cruises, you'll love them. Um, so... I came back rested and decided that I was going to ramp up my goals. Now, bear in mind that I set goals for the following year um, around October time, October, November latest, because if you're not setting goals around October in that last quarter of the year, you've already missed your first quarter goals because there's a time delay on the work that you do and the, the results that you see. So my goal had already been set. I knew exactly where I wanted to be next year. I knew what was important to me. And I set feel goals before I set anything else. How do I want to feel? Because if you don't feel good, what's the fucking point? I'll say, I've done it again, pot your mouth. Facebook is so going to ban me from my videos. 
<laughs> if you don't feel good, what's the point? You can have a million pound in the bank, but if you feel like crap, if you're not enjoying your life, what's the point? So I start with feel goals. How do I want to feel? If I want to feel abundant, energized, happy, if I want to be loving it, the process of my work and, and all of these things I set in October. And then I worked out what I needed to do volume-wise in business to progress, what I'd be happy with, what progression looked like for me. And I set these really clear goals and they were balanced and easily achieved. January hits, I'm rested and I'm like, that sounds a bit boring now. I can do way more than that. Let's pull things forward. Let's do more volume. Let's hire this person, this person and this person to help us do it. My team went boom because I hired loads of new people. My retreat venue and dream Spanish home. I ramped up the work on that and said, let's finish it six months ahead of schedule. So threw all the builders in full time as well, which meant James's workload catapulted because he's up there full time project managing it. And then at the same time as bringing all these new people into the team, I've got to train these new people. There's no point in expanding the team and getting all these awesome people. And they are awesome. And I'm so happy to have them on board. I really am. But they need my attention. They need time that I need to lead them. Um, so that blew up. Um, new lead magnets. I was like, right, I want to produce new, new training for people because they need this, they need this, they need this. So I got it all in my diary that that's all going to be done. I've got a retreat coming up in two weeks. Can't wait to see you there. I know there's some people on the call that are going to be coming over to Marbella for that. So I've got to prepare for that retreat. The training has got to be badass because that, that's the only thing that I'll settle for when it comes to the, to the ladies that are coming to the retreat. So I've got to prepare for all that. And suddenly, this workload was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And when I was rested and just come off break, that was fine because I was happy and excited to do 12 hour days and just bang it all out and get it all done. But a couple of weeks into the year of doing that, I started to feel like I hadn't even had a holiday and it started to become a bit of a chore and I started to regret it. So I can't wait to give you a hug, Amanda. Do you know what? And that's what I love about retreats is that these people that I feel like I know so intimately, like you, Amanda, who I've worked with for a long time now, and I, I've only ever actually met you on a screen, I actually get to see you in the flesh and like look you in the eye and cuddle you and all of that stuff. It's, I love retreats because it's, it's personal and that full immersion experience, that eyeball to eyeball around the kitchen table that you don't get, you know, online. So I'm really excited about that. Anyway, I digress. So started to feel overwhelmed and everything started to slow down. Exactly like I was describing with those windows. I needed to start closing some tabs because, you know, not everything needs to be done today, Michelle. That was, that was my new mantra and it's yours now. I'm gifting it to you. Not everything needs to be done today, Amanda. Not everything needs to be done today, Joanne. Who else is feeling overwhelmed? Type in the chat box if, you, if you're there and you're like, I'm in that place, I'm overwhelmed, my to-do list is too long. Not everything needs to be done today. You know, <clears throat> one of our biggest problems is that we underestimate, what well, we, sorry, we overestimate what's possible in a week, in six months. Not everything needs to be done today, Nikki, Nixie. Not everything needs to be done today, Joanne. So, because we overestimate what's possible and what we should be doing and, we've, um, and that expectation is so high in the short term. Not everything needs to be done today, Kerry. Not everything needs to be done today, Emma. And Catherine, not everything needs to be done today. We've got to remember this, Maria, you too. We're on, we overestimate and we push ourselves to do things in spaces of time like this. And we miss the point because we underestimate what's possible for us in five years time. I look back and in five years ago, I was living in a caravan, people. I couldn't afford my monthly bills every month. I had to make myself as small as possible so that every penny I had could be reinvested into my self-development, my business development. Five years ago, five years ago, I couldn't afford my mortgage. Today, I'm mortgage free. Five years ago, being a millionaire felt like something that only ever happened to those other people. Today, I'm a millionaire. Five years ago, I didn't know how to make money in a passive and leveraged way and still have a life. Now, I get time freedom as well as financial freedom. Five years, five years goes like that. Think about where you were five years ago. Take yourself back five years now and really think about that. 
I think about how quickly time's gone, really. In the next five years, your world could be transformatively different. It could be your dream lifestyle. If I could wave a magic wand and give you everything you want right now, think about what that would look like because in five years you can have that. In five minutes you can't. So don't push yourself unrealistically because what you're going to do is you're going to hinder the process of the next five years. And I had to get a check on this really quickly and I had to say to myself, whoa, you know, I have, I've took the joy out of my dream home because I put so much pressure on myself to get the retreats up and running quickly and get them filled and da 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 this is my dream home. I've worked towards this for the last five years. I've worked towards being mortgage free and living on the side of a mountain with no neighbours and nothing but views for days. <laughs> I've worked I've worked towards this and now I'm ruining it by having to race against the clock to get it completed quicker. And why am I doing that to myself? It's the ultimate form of self-sabotage. And what you're doing if you're in this state is the ultimate form of self-sabotage. What windows can you close? Commit to closing them over the next 24 hours. Look at things and say, what can I say no to? There is always things, don't tell me there isn't. Whether it's saying no to being the taxi for your family, whether it's saying no to being the cook for your family five days a week and asking somebody else to step in and cook for you sometimes. Whether it's saying no to the clients that are draining your time because they're taking more than they pay for. Whether it's you setting clearer boundaries with people. Whether it's you over committing and having loads of projects when you could just be focusing on one that's gonna give you the same income goal that you've got anyway, but you're just gonna do it easier. There are things you can close. You don't have to exist in a state of overwhelm. That doesn't have to be your story. That doesn't have to be the way you build your business and the way you do your life. But you've got to close some tabs. So the first thing I want you to do is commit with me now. And I want you to type it in the chat box. Say, I'm going to close some tabs, Michelle. Say it. You don't have to tell me what tabs. You don't have to say that out loud. They might be personal. You might be giving up sex or something. <laughs> oh, I ain't got time for that. That's not about you. <laughs> but type in the chat box. Tell me that you are committing to closing some windows. And actually going to sit down after this session today and go, right, seriously now, what windows am I going to close? Who do I need to talk to about that? You might be your husband that you've got to get the support of or a good friend, family member, some, you know, somebody that you're going to say, look, I'm going to have to say no to you. I'm going to close some tabs. Good. Catherine, high five. Joanne, yes, Joanne's closing tabs. Jackie, closing windows. Amazing. Good, good, good. Keep them coming. Catherine's not giving up sex. <laughs> I don't blame you. We need that. It's healthy. <laughs> I hope my mum's not watching. I'm 35 and still don't want my mum to be watching me talk about sex. Okay, good, 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 good. I see you all. I see you all committed. Okay, the second step. Now, this is really simple, but it's so powerful. I want you to make your to-do list small and your ta-da list massive. Does anybody know what a ta-da list is? You know when you do something amazing, you step back and you're like, ta-da! <laughs> That's what a ta-da list is. It's your done list. It's the things that you've achieved. Your to-do lists need to be this big every day and your ta-da list needs to be this big. Now, you might be saying, well, how can I make my to-do list small and my ta-da list big? Because what I'm saying is over-deliver. Under-commit and over-deliver. Because... Here's what happens when you create massive to-do lists for yourself every day. You look at them at the beginning of the day and you're like, I want to go back to bed. That's how you feel, just by looking at it. You feel like you don't even want it. You don't even want the day to begin. You dread it. If I look at my diary the night before and it's massive, I'm like, oh. And I get out of bed a little bit more sluggish than if it feels really achievable. If it feels dead achievable and the to-do list is small, you come at it with a different energy. You come at it with a different energy of, I can do this and I can do it really fucking well. I'm definitely going to get banned from Facebook Lives. So I need a swear box. <laughs> Someone want to set up like a PayPal account that I have to transfer a pound to every time I swear I tell you, you'll be so rich. You won't have to listen to any of this advice, you'll just be rich on that. So, if we make them small, we feel good, and if we over deliver, we feel like we're badasses, we feel like we're killing it, you know, just winning at life when you over deliver. What happens if you make a big to do list and you don't get halfway through it? How do you feel? Shit absolutely shit and then the next day you feel a little bit more shit because you're like oh no I've got that from yesterday to add in so really small to-do lists really big to-do lists 
I bet you don't even to-do a to-do list, do you? You're probably really good at doing the to-do list and then you get to the end of the day, look at it and you're like, oh, I didn't do it all. Shit, must try better next time. Beat yourself up a little bit and then finish work. Well, what about if you didn't do that? What about if you sat down and you went over? This is, this is something that is embedded into me from a coach I worked with a few years ago. And it's so small. It's so small that I nearly didn't do it. Because some things that are really easy to do are easy not to do. But actually, the things that have the biggest impact are the small things, the 5% tweaks that make 100% of the difference. Big problems aren't solved with big solutions, ever. Big problems are solved with little things that most people ignore because they're just small. And they're obviously, if they're small, they're not going to have a big impact. Wrong. Small things have a massive, massive impact. Ta-da list. She used to call it a done list. One of my previous coaches and I changed it to a ta-da list because... It is, it's like you get to the end of the day and you're like, ta-da, look at me, killing it. And you just sit for five minutes and list all of the things. Put pen to paper and actually list the things that you did that day. Everything, everything. Like I got up this morning and I washed my hair, fucking winning, I washed my hair. I then had breakfast and it was healthy. I then went for a walk. I then dropped the kids off at school and got them there safely, winning at being a mum. I then, you know, list it all off, not just business, everything. Because when you do that, you get to the end of the day and you're like, all right, I'm killing it. I'm not that bad. And it puts a spring in your step. It's far better than looking at the long to-do list that you created that never got achieved. Because over time, as a high achiever that constantly feels like you could do more, yes, it motivates you to do better, but over a long period of time, it just demotivates you and makes you feel like crap. So you lose a bit of your spark every day that you underachieve or in your mind underachieve. So what's far better is small to-do lists, large to-do lists. See, so if you're thinking, how do I make my to-do list small? Rocks, pebbles, sand. This is the last thing I'm going to leave you with. This is a nugget that I should normally share with my, um, with my client group. Rocks, pebbles, sand. This is how we plan our time. Can't go into masses of detail here, but I'm going to give you the highlights. Rocks are things that absolutely need to happen that day. They can't move. They're like big boulders. You can't pick them up. They're stuck. They have to happen today. You can't move them around. This is important. This is stuff like the lifeblood of your business. This is that work, your lead generation. If you don't do lead generation every day, if you don't market your business every day, you're not going to get clients through the door. Those things are rocks. And you've got pebbles. Pebbles can be a little bit more flexible. Pebbles you can move. So if you don't get it done and you've got, you've got three amazing rocks done, then you've, you've, you've killed the day. It's amazing. And you've got a few pebbles that you didn't get to, but that's all right because you can move the pebbles a couple of days. Because they're important, they've got to get done, but they're not like time sensitive, really important. My business is going to be affected massively if I don't do them. And then you've got sand. Sand is just like, you know, it, if it doesn't get done, it's fine. It's the nice to do's. It's the things that you can do at midnight if you've got a spare 10 minutes and you're awake. Or you can leave for a couple of weeks if, you know, nothing's going to happen majorly if they don't get done. Think about it like this. If you've got a jar, a glass jar, and I give you that jar now and it's got a lid on it, right? Just give you that jar. If you pour the sand in first and then put the pebbles in and then try and squeeze the rocks down, it's never going to shut. This is how most people run their life. The sand, the stuff like cleaning out the cutlery drawer, mowing the lawn, filling the dishwasher. And it is sand because if you're in business building phase and you're saying to yourself that you want to build a massive business and then be able to hire a cleaner to do all this stuff for you, but you're spending your time doing stuff that's sand that can be moved. Or let's say adjusting my website and making it pretty or the nice to do, the stuff that isn't income producing and not going to bring any money. They do that first. I'll tell you why? Because it's comfortable. It's, it's, it's generally in, in your comfort zone, the sand. So people do that first. Then the pebbles. The rocks is normally the stuff that's outside your comfort zone that's going to have the biggest impact on your business. And they don't get room in the jar. They never come in. So weeks go by of you doing sand and pebbles. The rocks don't happen. The results are shit. You feel overwhelmed. You feel like you've got a mountain to climb and you don't feel like you've got any time to do anything. That's generally what happens. If you were to put the rocks in first and then you put the pebbles in and they sat nicely around the rocks and then you pour the sand into the crevices, everything would still fit. Same workload, but just different way around. You just compact it differently. And your diary works exactly the same. Rocks, important. Things that absolutely have to happen. The lifeblood, the income-producing activities. Pebbles, stuff that has to happen, but the stuff that can be moved. Sand, the nice to-dos. Fit it around everything else if you get time. If you feel overwhelmed, those two things are going to have the biggest impact. Number one, close some windows. Number two, rocks, pebbles, 
sand, small to-do list, big to-da list. One of the um, quick and easy and effective things that I'm going to share with you now that might be causing you a place of pain is if your market is too generic. If you haven't niched down enough and you think that your, your ideal client, your market is maybe too wide, maybe not strong enough, therefore even when you do do the rocks, you're not hitting the mark because you're not getting the leads in or... If you're someone just starting out and you're like, I can't move on until I've got this ideal client locked down, the lead magnet that I was insisting on creating because I knew it was going to be a game changer for people, this free training that I created is called Nail Your Niche in 10 Minutes. And it shows you in 10 minutes, literally, how to go from generic to super clear marketing strategy, uh, super clear marketing niche. Um, some people don't know if they're niche enough. Some people are too niche. Some people are nowhere near niche enough, so they're too generic. It's 10 minutes. So it might be saving you a chunk of time, which means it will also reduce your overwhelm because you're, if you're not niche enough, your ideal client isn't clear enough and you can't show up with a message that packs a punch with them, you're going to be having to work 10 times harder than somebody that's got a really strong niche and ideal client market. So that could be contributing. So if you haven't already, I've been advertising this for the last week, so you might already have it. If you haven't already got my brand new training, now you're niche in 10 minutes, you need to comment on this video saying, I need a niche in capital letters and we'll make sure you get that training. It's totally free, no sales pitch, no string attached, 10 minutes, audio, and you'll know if you're niche enough. And if you're not, you'll know exactly how to fix it. And that's me, lots of love.